Now, Pastor Tony, here's a curly question for you. In view of the public and biblical expectations that pastors <laughs> should be blameless and set the highest moral standards in the community, what would you suggest to younger ministers and to protect themselves from falling into the trap of financial or moral failure? Well, um, that isn't a, a difficult question. Transparency and sensitivity is, is very important. Transparency with your spouse, honesty, openness at all times. Cultivate a relationship with your wife where you can share any intimate jangles within, any upheavals that you're having mentally, emotionally, uh, you're flat, you're feeling down, you're feeling alienated even from the people that you're trying to serve. Uh, we all go through times when uh, we're the best pastor or we're the worst pastor. And that can have a subconscious and it can have a very conscious effect on us. We need to be able to speak to our loved one, uh, our wife particularly, and if and when, and I pray never, but if and when there arise temptations, then you have this wonderful relationship that you've cultivated and that you've renewed with your wife. You see, I, I knew my wife when I was 14 years of age, and though it may seem strange to you, uh, I'm not sure that I fell in love, love at first sight. I'm not sure I believe in that. But I was attracted to her. And I uh, make uh, no bones about it. I wanted to marry her one day. And uh, over a period of time and the developing, uh, developing of our both personalities and our spiritual life, um, we did fall in love. And ten years later, we did marry. But we were friends before we were a marital couple. So Eunice and I talk about anything and everything. I hasten to say sometimes everyone. And we have a wonderful guarded relationship. I never let anybody, I never let anybody encroach on that relationship. It is to me sacred. And uh, I'm happy to say that some, uh, <laughs> well, over 60 years later, we still have this guarded, godly, and wonderfully happy and refreshing relationship because interwoven in the love match is the friendship. And of course, I've got a lot of friends in ministry that should I be going through a hard time, and I'm thankful to say that's been very few and far between, but I have so many wonderful ministerial colleagues that I count as friends people that I really love, who love me, we get on well, so that if I was going through something that I couldn't handle, that Eunice couldn't handle, I know where to go. And you must have relationships. A further question to that. As a pastor, you've obviously over the years come across things in the life of the church that has caused you spiritual concerns. How, how have you, as a pastor, handled the problem of public sin in the church? What has been your philosophy in handling it? Well, every situation is different. A public sin has to be dealt with publicly. A private problem, um, a breakdown in a relationship, perhaps due to moral problems. If there is contrition, if there is uh, repentance, then there must be compassion and always you are seeking for restoration. Restoration of a relationship, restoration of a marriage, and each particular situation is different. And uh, if it's one that is known far and wide, well then it has to be addressed publicly. And yet always with compassion, always with sensitivity. Do you know, I, I always feel that this is so important, that discretion is not deception. In other words, if you handle something sincerely, sensitively, and with discretion, you're discreet about it, that's not cover up. That's allowing a person to come through their failure into uh, restoration, fruitfulness, and success. 
and uh, I've seen that done many, many, many times. But one has to be wise, one has to be uh, counseled not only by Scripture, by the Spirit of God, but when it is very complex, you do need to speak to people that have been experienced in these things, and it's a step-by-step, -step, a situation-by-situation, and a day-by-day -day experience.